Hello, welcome back to my podcast. I'm Lily, Lily Kate Makes on Instagram, and this is my knitting podcast I, where I share my projects, my designs. I'm a knitwear designer, um, and yeah, I share a bit of everything, a bit of knitting chat. I decided at the beginning of this year that I was going to make it a more regular commitment and have videos every fortnight, regardless of whether I had a new design to share or not. And here we are, so sticking to that schedule. And like in my last video, I thought I might try and actually sit and knit. So I do have a project on the go. Last time I realised I kept looking down at it and it was probably really annoying to watch that I was just looking at my lap the whole time. Um, so I shall, she says, once I've just got past these first few stitches, I shall try to, oh for God's sake, not do that. <laughs> But may, may as well make the most of the time sitting and chatting to knit as well. So, yes, yeah, since my last video, I did finally finish my pink yoke sweater that I was chatting about last time, which I've decided just to call the love number yoke, love number sweater even, um, because that is the name of the yarn colour, my own yarn, and that is my favourite colour name, uh, the dynamical love number, meaning the degree to which a planetary body is deformed by tidal forces. I just, I love that. Oh, an astronomical body, actually, not a planetary body. Um, I just, I don't know, thought it just sounds really nice how the name all came together. Um, so I thought I'd been referring to it as the love number sweater anyway. A bit of backstory that I am also an astronomy and planetary sciences student, so that is the link. That is why all the colour names have got these kind of geeky themes to them. I have done a whole video on that, so I'm not going to go on about all those again but yes I'd been referring to it as the love number sweater um, and then I thought hang on why don't I just use that as the name so that's all good but I don't have it here to show you because it's still drying on the blocking on the drying rack downstairs it's taking a little while to dry um, and it took forever to finish that one with so many things that just kept going wrong with it and even now when I've blocked it the yoke seems to have expanded more than I the swatch did and I might have to frog a bit, oh, I don't even know. But we'll talk about that another time I can actually show you. So in the meantime I thought right I'm casting on something new. So yeah, I'm currently working on the upper back of a sweater that I just cast on last night. Um, maybe I shouldn't know, maybe these um, metal needles click clacking might be a bit annoying finish the row. Um, yeah, I cast down last night, thought I'm just going to do something that is a simple drop shoulder construction with a different neckline that I've not done before um, and of course some I have some plans for the sleeves um, but the main construction is fairly simple and I could just get on with it rather than having to calculate 50 million things at the beginning and potentially have to rip them. So that's what I wanted because I felt like I kind of lost a bit of the momentum of I had been doing like right, design something, have it all turned around really quickly, um, knit the project quickly, get it to test it as quickly, and I lost a bit of that, um, which I think, did I mention that in my last video? I honestly can't remember which things I've talked about and haven't, um, but yeah, the plan is to try and pick that up again, be a bit more efficient with one project at a time, getting it tested and getting the pattern out. So, that's the current plan, I'm realising that I'm having to look at this more than I because I'm knitting with two strands, um, one second. I'm using Rowan Felted Tweed and Kidsock Haze, which is actually the yarn that I bought last, was it last, yeah, early last year I think. Finally getting around to using it. Um, I'm using them, the two held together. I, I can't remember the shade of the, the Felted Tweed, but I think this grey Kidsock Haze is called Aura. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm making and I can knit reasonably quickly with the two strands but I just think you have to keep a little bit more of an eye on it to make sure that you are catching both so maybe that's not a good sit and knit and chat so yeah. I will show you that next time when there will be more to show than this just just the top of a sweater anyway as for what I'm wearing this is my Lawrenson sweater this was the actually the second version which I think I don't, do I prefer, no, I don't prefer it. I, I love them both equally, but I, I do really like it. So I made the second version with the same puff sleeves as the first, but a nipped much shorter and with waist shaping here. So the, the original has a this 
side panel here, the rib gets wider there. That doesn't happen on this one. It's just way shaping instead. Big poofy sleeves, my favourite. And um, yeah, the turned twisted rib collar. I don't know how well you can see that. But yeah, um, it's, it's really nice for a, a winter day at home when I don't need a huge jumper on, but I just want something warm. So like I said, I haven't actually got that much knitting done lately, which is kind of because I've been very busy with other things and also um, decided to spend some time organising instead of actually just knitting, rather than just, you know, ignoring the cupboard of doom and carrying on knitting and always knitting with the latest yarn that's come into my stash, I thought, right, me and my mum had a proper sort out, like a proper proper sort out, got out all the yarn we own um, and put together this book <laughs> of little samples. So I thought I might have a little chit chat about that, kind of a, a, a whistle stop stash tour, but it's all in one book because I, there's absolutely no way I'm doing a stash tour of getting it all out. Um, yeah, it was interesting to do actually, it took both of us the two full days, like early morning till 9pm full days um, with both the two of us working together so I was sticking them in here, my mum was writing down the notes like we had a system going on and it took a while um, so this is all the yarn that the both of us own like this, this isn't quite all that <laughs> um, most of the yarn that both of us own in our combined stash from the last 15, yeah, 15 years that we've been knitting um, during which time I've also been a knitwear designer so getting sent yarn and I have also worked for a yarn brand and had lots of prop yarn from when I did photography for a yarn brand so that and the fact that we've inherited lots of yarn from my grandma from other people's grandmas um, we yarn finds its way to us quite often even though it doesn't actually feel like I've been shopping at all really just more inherited yarn and more, more things like that it just appears it just just happens to come here but anyway yes it was very interesting to actually go through um, and see everything that I already have and see how I can make best use of it and what I actually have sweater quantities of for designing in and things that could be a sweater quantity if combined together um, and all these different yeah just kind of different ways of think, looking at it so I'll just show you the first page actually it's probably easiest this is just a book, a uh, square scrapbooking thing, it's not got a particular pretty cover, so I'll not show you. Um, oh, this isn't going to work, is it? Because the sellotape's reflective. But if you can get the general idea here that I have little yarn scraps and I wrote with a white gel pen, which if you're going to do this, which I would highly recommend, um, I would definitely suggest using black, black scrapbooking you know, just a black scrapbook um, with card and then a white pen because I kept finding that yarns that looked, I don't know, maybe, maybe this will show up, maybe it won't, not sure how well it shows up there, but yarns that look very similar in the skein, particularly the light coloured fluffy yarns, which is what I'm really fancying using this year, um, when you put them on a white background they looked very similar, but then when you actually twist up a little piece and put it on a black background, the difference became far more apparent. I thought actually that was that was a good call, good shout that doing it on on the black background. So I mean using plain sellotape is not the prettiest, particularly when I'm trying to show you bright daylight here and it's all shiny, but it, it got the job done. So really really we wanted to have a catalogue of all the yarn that we have um so that it could flick through here without having to go rummaging in boxes because the yarn had been in various different places around the house and we are planning to try and get some different storage to have it all in one place but even so anyone who has more than like 10 skeins of yarn probably knows how much of a pain it is to go rummaging through and looking for what you want so we just thought mm, better to have it where you can see it all but in a physical format like I know there's the Ravelry stash function and I could have a list on my phone or I could make a spreadsheet or you know any number of digital ways that it could have been done but I think yes that would tell me how much I have but would that be inspiring to look at and think oh I could do this in it oh look at those two together no it wouldn't not even being able to see a Ravelry stash where I could sort it by yarn weight or fibre or anything like that seeing photos together is not the same as seeing a page of textures like this so 
that was the thinking really um, to have it all organised in here there was a the system was pretty much lace weight through to super chunky but within that had like mohair lace, alpaca lace, silky lace weights, sock yarns, you know we kind of went through different types trying to have a system sometimes it went to pot and it was just kind of DK balls of anything um, but it, it doesn't matter I left plenty of blank pages in between and that's it's besides the point no one no one else needs to be able to <laughs> follow the system as long as we can it's fine um, so yeah it was a really interesting exercise actually to see what we have what we don't particularly have um, and how it could be used so made me realise that actually I've got quite a lot of these mohair lace scraps um, for different yarns we had different cutoff points for example sock yarn had to have was it 20 grams to make it into the book any scraps less than 20 grams went into a different scrap box and they did not make the cut for the book because we thought you've, you've got to draw the line somewhere um, but obviously it's a little bit different with, with the fluffy lace weight mohair that 4 grams goes a long way so we wrote all of those down and I realised that actually I've got quite a lot there that could be a lot of pale pinky okay, the phone just rang and I cannot remember where I was up to but anyway, I'll continue so yeah, we had lots of lace weight which I haven't actually bought a lot of in the last couple of years and not really sure what's the best approach to using it because I actually do love a lace weight garment this is this is why my every name sweater is out here to demonstrate um, I'm not going to drag Dolly over she's she's just filling my background spot there you can see um, so yeah that used a heavy lace weight yarn really and I actually do really like the drapiness the light fabric that you get from a lace weight sweater and I think it's really useful to have something that's you know that's high neck and long sleeved but still fairly lightweight and good for summer particularly in the UK um, but obviously they take a lot longer to knit and I know that that means the whole designing and knitting process takes longer and it puts some people off so I'm like hmm, I'm not sure that's the best approach kind of want something a little bit quicker um, so yeah we have a lot of lace weight there that we my, me and my mum acquired years ago mainly it's quite old um, so my only plan so far with lace weight yarn is actually for the, the kid silk kind of yarns, the, the mohairs that I plan to make something scrappy. Well, I say scrappy. I found that I had, yeah, that's what I was talking about. I have a lot of these sort of soft pinky, grey, um, some variegated, some not. I actually have some Rowan kid silk night a little bit of, which was, it's been long since discontinued, but it's a, a merino silk not merino silk, a mohair silk blend with, I assume it's Stellina, I'd have to look it up, I can't remember, but just has a little bit of sparkle in it, so that's a really nice one that I thought that could add a little bit of something. Um, that I have enough yarn with it all added together in the mohair that I could make a sweater if I used like two strands and, um, you know, combine it a bit of bright pink here, a bit of soft pink there and kind of blend. So I've got a general image in my head of a wafty loose drapey pale pink with some cream some gray i don't know i've kind of got a vague image in my head <laughs> but i haven't really got further than that and i do need to check probably check that i've got enough yarn because what i don't want to do is start a scrappy project and then have to go out and buy extra little bits because that's just annoying however on that note with the scrappy projects because as i was doing this I posted a couple of Instagram stories and said, oh yeah, I'll have to do something scrappy to use this up. And quite a few people replied to my story saying, oh yeah, we need scrappy sweater patterns and that kind of thing. But, it's it's a difficult one. because I mean, partly because I like these kind of neat, refined looking items, which doesn't necessarily go hand in hand with scrappy. I mean, I do also, I love the look of... Um, I'm going to butcher the pronounce, pronunciation, Lerkebegger, Bagger, not sure. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about um, on Instagram. I knit a alone together sweater last year. In fact, let me go grab it. I say last year, but I actually mean two years ago because that's how long the pandemic has been going on. So this was the sort of pattern, the loose pattern even, that she put out at the start of the first lockdown. The idea being, let's all knit scrappy sweaters together whilst we're in lockdown. It's such a novelty. 
oh here we are two years later but anyway so this used the I used a discontinued Rowan Luxury DK or something, Silky DK or something, I can't remember, it's long gone, um, for the, my base yarn, which is the only purple item I made, I think. And the bath turned purple when I um, bought this, so good job I wasn't too precious about the colours and the actual uh, scraps. But yeah, so this was the, the technique where you use two strands and then scraps. Um, which I love. I love how it looks, but it's very much her technique, and I'm not going to try and you know copy that or do anything similar. That's her style. Um, there's other designers as well that have that kind of mixed up, eclectic, scrappy style. That's not particularly what I've done, and I'm not going to try and tread on their toes. Um, so I'm not going to go that approach with scrappy. So you know the other kind of alternative is that you just make a striped sweater and you have all different colours in it. But then I feel like that could be. Unless your scraps are a very defined palette, like if you're the kind of knitter who only uses neutrals and then all the scraps look good together. If you're more like me, slash my mum, or slash is it's one being, um, looking at this page as an example. So this is a, a four ply oddments page as an example where we've got all the, the grams written next to each one. There's not really a theme going on there, except for the fact that we used to really like bluey turquoisey yarns and purples and I don't really like them anymore um, so yeah they wouldn't make a nice it's not as if it would make a nice sweater all combining it all together unless I was very careful and it's just not particularly my style so then you get into thinking well yeah so if I did a sweater that was all scraps and all over the place it would be that would be the design element it wouldn't really give you much scope to do much in the way of shaping or details, you know, the kind of like pleats and things like that that I generally like would just get lost. They're like this, this stripey scrappiness, I can't get my words out, would be the feature. Um, so, which doesn't really lend itself to writing and selling patterns, so I'm not particularly sold on that idea. And then the other thing, way of looking at it is like, right, I'm going to use all these scraps, this is the way what I think I'm going to end up doing. Um, is to use the scraps of different colours having some sort of neutral base. So in the way that I use the purple here, obviously that wasn't neutral because this was like all over the place colour wise, um, but say if you did a striped sweater and you had a cream sort of undyed maybe background and then a stripe and then background and then a different stripe and used it like that, um, so it would kind of bring it all together um, and look deliberate rather than like it had been made from and ends. Not that there is anything wrong with that of course, but it's just not particularly my style. So a lot of the stuff in here I'm thinking, I could use all of these little bits and bobs if I buy a load of basic beige yarn or something like that, so it's not really ideal. Although thinking of beige yarn, I've got about 50 skeins of my own yarn in the beige colour, so maybe I should use my worsted and iron white scraps for a strap sweater there. <sighs> I don't know, but anyway, yeah, we, we separated things out into different types of yarn, different weights. Um, I've also been sent, obviously, quite a lot of yarn in the last couple of years as a design, as yarn support as a designer, or to feature in Instagram collaborations. Um, so I have various different sort of quantities of yarn. For example, here I have a page of Shibui yarn, which is gorgeous yarn. I have one skein of each of the different bases in the same colour so I th I'm, I'm not sure what I'll do with that because obviously I don't want to design in something um, design something that uses all those different yarns that no one's going to have in their stash so that might just get used for a personal arty project maybe more of an art piece for the wall <laughs> rather than something to wear maybe um, but yeah that's the kind of that's the reason I wanted to do this as a physical book so that I could have these ideas as I went along and have this to refer to um, and I just thought that would be much nicer than having photos on a screen even if I could access that while I'm out and about and everything but yeah I think this is nice so that's what I've been doing and it, it really was made me think that I, I mean I did toss up how many different little samples of yarn are in this book and I don't know if I should even have eight. There were 388, <laughs> put it that way. Um, some of them, 
the vast majority being scraps or one skein. I think I wrote down that I had a sweater's worth of nine yarns out of all of that. Uh, calling that if I had a sweater's worth of one yarn, not a sweater's worth of stripes. Um, and of those, only three of them were current to yarn. So the majority of the sweaters, sweater quantities I have are much older and discontinued, which you may think isn't a problem. You know, it isn't a problem. <laughs> it's not at all. I could design in those, but I often find that if I design in something that's discontinued, then people ask me where they can get the yarn. I get lots of emails saying, oh, can you suggest substitutes? Um, even if it's a standard weight yarn, I'll still get emails asking for substitutes. So, you know, I'm kind of bringing more work on myself if I don't just use something obvious. Um, and But more, more to the point really is that a lot of yarns that are discontinued, some of them are just, I don't know, it's a basic Aaron Wake Merino and that company went out of business or something like For example, this, this sweater that I'm wearing is made in an Aaron Wake Blue Face Leicester from a local brand that went out of business and I bought a lot of the stock. Um, so, but I can't tell you where to go and get that yarn. So that's why I use it for things like a second sample like this, where I've already done the first sample in a different yarn. Um, but yeah, a lot of the yarns that become discontinued, it's generally, they are the more unique yarns anyway. They're like yarns that have got a different type of fibre in them. Like I've got some Aran weight that's got a little sparkly thread through it. Um, I've got a sport-ish weight mohair and linen blend um, you know the more unique yarns that must not sell as many sell as much for these brands which is understandable if they're not just something standard so they're the ones that become discontinued therefore it makes it even more unwise to design in them um, but then they're the ones that are discontinued that are too tempting to pick up when there's a pack of 10 <laughs> on sale so yeah, you kind of end up in an awkward position where I feel like I've got such a lot of yarn, you know, it's a, it's a crazy amount, but it wouldn't wouldn't make sense to use some of those sweater quantities to design with. Um, so, which I kind of deliberated over for a while thinking, is that just being, is that a very unsustainable approach to acquire, buy, be sent, whatever, new yarn when I have all of this, but think, you know, I'm trying to do my best with sustainability and just trying to use my personal stash isn't effective if I'm treating this as a business. You know, I've got to think of ways that other people can buy their yarn or can use their own stash or making something that isn't a yarn that's easily substitutable and, you know, it's not really compatible to say, use your personal stash but treat it as a business. Um, so. Yeah, it's a bit of an awkward one really, but oh, I've been chatting and thinking about this a lot over the last few days while I was going through the book. Um, and yeah, just because I've also, there's quite a bit of yarn in here that I've been sent. Um, and I really want to be very careful this year. Not that I wasn't last year, I mean I did turn down quite a bit of yarn. Um, but if I don't think I'm going to be able to use it. It's, you know, it's it's not great to just say yes anyway because then I end up feeling bad that I have the yarn but I only have so many hours in the day that I can knit. I can't use everything and my my business shouldn't be dictated by which brand decides oh we want to send you this and you're not even going to get a say in the colour. You know, I shouldn't be spending weeks of work on something that someone has spent, you know, it's it's £50 worth of yarn, it's not weeks of my work. Um, so it's a bit of a funny one because you end up feeling like, oh, I'm being sent this, I'm, um, I should be very, very grateful, but then I'm like, actually, that's quite a lot of work they're expecting. Um, so yeah, just, just being cautious on that front. Um, and not putting pressure on myself that if I haven't agreed, yes, I will do a design in your yarn by this month. If I haven't agreed that, then I should feel the pressure that I have to do just because I've been sent it, so. Yeah, hopefully that doesn't make me come across as a really entitled uh, cow, but yeah, just still flicking through here, I'll try and stop looking down, but I just thought this was a good page actually for an example of something else, um, of why it's really good to use the book. So on this side I have Rowan Bigwall, 
and then oh, I don't know what this is, it was a sample from a trade show. Um, not very much of any of these, just, just scraps and all of those that could maybe be used together. But it's a good example of how, say, yarns that are labelled as super chunky, um, there's such a good big variety within those yarns, which I've been particularly aware of lately whilst working on my chunky coat pattern and suggesting yarns for test knitters. Um, yeah, it's, it's just helpful to have, instead of having all the information within a Ravelry page or an Excel spreadsheet where it says this many yards per 100 grams or the thickness or the recommended gauge is 12 stitches to 4 inches or something like that. Like, just being able to see on a page, right, these are both labelled super chunky, both these pages. Clearly they are not the same. Clearly these are nowhere near as thick as these. Um, that's helpful. <laughs> so another reason I'd recommend doing it in a book. So yeah, just pull out all of your yarn, get some sellotape and a white gel pen and set aside a couple of days for it. Would definitely recommend. Um, so yeah, that's, I can't really remember what I've spoken about here now. That's what I've been focusing on instead of actual knitting last week. And why it took me so long to get my yoke finished. Um, but I think it's important sometimes to, rather than just getting caught up in the want to cast on a new project, um, you know, which we all love doing, we all get the bit of startitis sometimes where you just want to start something new. And I know I get really antsy when I don't have something on the needles, like it bothers me, I feel stressed out. Um, but rather than just rushing in, actually taking stock of everything that I have, everything that I could make, writing. So having been through this, I've then gone through writing a list of anything that I have a sweater quantity of realised that it's actually not that much um, and you know trying to be take a mindful careful approach <laughs> to what I use and acquire and having gone through this I thought you know there's a few projects that I had in mind for this year that will require yarn um, will require getting new yarn but just for my first project after having done this scrapbook I really feel like I need to make a dent so Hence the kids up haze and the felted tweed that I've had since last year. And yeah, it just it was just nice to feel organised. So that is the point of today's video is to recommend that you make a yarn scrapbook. And hopefully next time I'll have some more projects to share with you. So thank you for watching and please do share your yarn projects with me. Yarn scrapbooks, sorry. Um I I posted a story during the during the whole process, which was quite a process, um, of my mohair scraps in a vase, so I will insert that photo here, or here maybe, um, and quite a few people sent me more stories of their yarn in vases or in jars, and like, it, it was a little thing, and I, I really like that, people sending me their photos, so please do continue, um, put your yarn scraps in a vase and make a, make an ornament out of it, would recommend that, and yeah, so please tag me if you take a similar approach to organising your yarn. I would love to see your yarn scrapbook. See how many pages you fill in yours. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in two weeks.